Welcome to the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. A silent revolution is taking place here that could very well play a significant role in the growth of electric vehicle ecosystem in our country. Car and Bike decided to visit the Institute's Chemical Engineering Department, the hotbed of all the action. Here we meet Dr. Arvind Kumar Chandiram, who is leading the team that has developed zinc air batteries that for various reasons have the potential to replace the more popular lithium ion batteries currently used in electric vehicles. What we have done at the beginning was uh, we did a survey on what can be the next generation technology after lithium ion. Okay. So we kind of came out with a handful of technologies that include sodium ion, uh, lithium sulfur, aluminum air, zinc air batteries. And then next thing what we have done was do we have any IP space? Because we don't want to just replicate what has been done elsewhere. We want to have a unique technology available to the country. And at the same time, we also want to know where the efficiency can be higher. For example, I give X input into it. Can I get maximum out of that X back? So that is one of the things. So all these things made us to come to a conclusion that zinc is possibly the next generation technology where we don't have a serious fundamental issues. But then there are issues that is hampering them from going into the large market. So, so how has the journey been like, you know, when you started out yeah. and now till where we are today? What's the progress been like? Is it faster than what you thought? Were there roadblocks? How has it been? So, in fact, uh, more than the roadblocks, I would say we have learned quite a lot and moved our directions and improved our uh, uh, way by which we can put the batteries into the market. For example, when we started, we started with a small lab scale device. And, uh, even, but then the lab scale device and publishing a paper is one thing. But then we started with that part. But then the moment we started scaling it up, we faced a new set of issues, which we never anticipated. And uh, during solving those problems, we solved another set of problems that we thought we will have to solve separately. That was a very nice part of it. And on the way, we also found out that our market is not only limited to one set of sector, let's say vehicle sector. We also found that the same battery can go into the uh, stationary storage sector also. All right. And uh, we kind of get, got a lot of input from many industries. Like while we are working from the cell level, now we are at the pack level. So these inputs made us to improve it much significantly. We thought initially only we are going to put our thoughts into it. Now it's not just our thoughts, it's the thoughts of my group, my students, the entire uh, automobile uh, community fraternity and also many energy storage companies and many scientists across. So tell us a bit about testing it, you know, you've gone through the process of making it first the cells and the batteries. How does the testing process work and where have you reached on that? So uh, typically any battery that we develop goes for charge and discharge testing. Uh, they range from what we call it as C rate, right? Depending on high C rate and low C rate charging is what we do. But then the reality is that none of the batteries really undergo the same drive profile that we test in the lab. They have a different drive profile. For example, we use it in our bikes, in our cars, or in the stationary storage devices. The use profile is very different. We charge at different rate, we use it continuously. Some people use it very politely. So the charge discharge profile is very different. So first, what we did is, we did that standard charge discharge measurements. Once we pass the basic requirements of a battery, then we subject them to the actual drive profiles. And our battery should seriously withstand that actual drive profile. It's not only about charge and discharge, it's also about the temperature in which the batteries will operate. It's also about the other conditions like humidity in which the batteries operate. Because then we give the real scenario to the batteries and only once they pass that test, we put it into the field testing. So this is how our battery testing journey has been. Safety, of course, is an important parameter, especially in the light of recent incidents of EVs catching fire. And Dr. Chandran and his team have been on the job to do some rigorous testing. What we do is that uh, we set the batteries at a given temperature and under a given humidity and we subject them to the actual drive profile testing. Okay. And here is one such mission where we try to uh, abuse the batteries <laughs> electrically, thermally and mechanically. We can even do the mechanical abuse also inside those uh, uh, yeah. our, our test stations. Uh, essentially, we try to mimic what happens to a battery in the real life. And once it passes our test, if it fails, we learn a lot of it. We try to collect the data on why the batteries fail. And then we try to apply a fix from the beginning, like we put it to the materials, we put it to the design, we put it to our fabrication process. And then we try to see if we have solved the problem. Then it goes, undergoes the test back again. Then eventually once it passes, then it goes out, otherwise it goes back to the loop. So we have a phenomenal feedback loop in our lab. So anything fails, we understand them thoroughly, 
before we go for the uh, like final product out into the right so finally tell me you know what are your timelines like where do you see this how do you see this progressing over the next few years or uh, can it be taken up uh, on a large scale across the country or even beyond that uh, reliability affordability how confident are you about how what the future is for zinc batteries so uh, that's a great question actually so thing is that we are now competing with the, one of the most mature technologies in the world, which is uh, the uh, lithium ion batteries. Yeah. So zinc ion batteries, on the other hand, offer a different set of advantages. One is cost. Even the lab scale production cost at the moment is one third of the mass production cost of the lithium ion. Okay. So when it goes down, I'm expecting that it's going to be literally dirt cheap. That's how it's going to be, seriously. And these batteries are damn safe because we use water-based electrolyte inside. And the only fundamental issue with this is it is a low power system. So we are targeting all the two wheelers and three wheeler market, definitely not into the four wheeler cars, for example. Because two wheelers and three wheelers contribute to a huge amount of uh, automobile uh, like uh, numbers in terms of a number of automobiles. So we're really targeting those two wheelers and three wheelers and also the stationary storage devices. And the thing is that all the resources are available in-house within the country. Zinc, it's one of the low cost elements that is present and we have the entire resource. India is very famous for zinc. India is one of the largest manufacturers of zinc. And so this is about the advantages of it and how fast we're going to do. We have the battery pack, everything is ready. Now all we need is like, like roughly two years to really subject those batteries to the reliability test. Once that passes the reliability test, we are good to go. The battery packs developed by the team are of the energy capacity of 1.3 kilowatt hour and can go up to 2.6 kilowatt hour and designs have evolved along the way. Uh, we have done multiple designs and this is almost the 10th design that we have worked on. It, uh, we have multiple failures while working but still uh, like this is almost the design we feel it will work still we are working on improving it. The team is also working on creating an infrastructure for battery swapping when it comes to these zinc air batteries. Along with zinc air batteries, we are also working on zinc recharging stations. We have designed zinc recharging stations in such a way that they can be installed anywhere in the town, city, on the roads. So just like the way we have petrol stations, petrol refilling stations, we can have zinc bunks where these recharging stations can be installed. Car and Bike wishes Professor Chandiran and his team success in achieving what they've set out to do. The possible success of this project could change the way we look at EVs in our country. A reliable, more affordable technology when it comes to electric vehicles could change the landscape of vehicles in our country in a big way.